Welcome back, everybody. This is our video solution to problem two from Quiz 9, Spring 2023, Math 302, Cal State Fullerton. And in this video, we are going to show that if you have some Gaussian integer with norm 1, then that element is a unit. All right, so uh, quick recollection. Uh, the norm map takes a Gaussian integer, which we know we can write that in the form a plus bi and it's going to return a non-negative integer. Oops, we don't need a little line there. And it's just given by a squared plus b squared, or uh, you could also say this sends just z to z times its conjugate. Okay, so either one, either one works. So in our case, we're assuming that we have we're assuming that we have some Gaussian integer z such that n of z is equal to 1. And I'm going to show you two different proofs that z is a unit. The first is the one that I expect most people will go to. Uh, the second is, I think, the more elegant proof. So, but let's start with this first one. So, uh, if I assume that z is of the form a plus bi, then, well, we know n of z is equal to 1, and that's going to imply that a squared plus b squared is equal to 1. Okay, and here a and b are integers. And so now I have a sum of integer squares equal to 1. So we know that if the absolute value of a is greater than 1, then a squared will be greater than 1, and that'll imply that a squared plus b squared will be greater than 1, which we're not allowed to have. a squared plus b squared is equal to 1. And similarly, if the absolute value of b is greater than 1, we get the same conclusion. So we conclude then that a and b have to have absolute value less than or equal to 1. Okay, so what are the possibilities if a and b are integers and they have absolute value uh, less than or equal to 1? This implies that a and b have to be either 0, 1, or minus 1. Okay, so then that tells me that, for example, uh, the pair a comma b, right, or if you like a plus bi, what can it equal? Well, if a is equal to 0, then, well, we would need b squared equal to 1, and so then b could either be 1 or minus 1. So we could have i or minus i. And if b is equal to 0, if b is equal to 0, well, the same thing, the a would have to be either 1 or minus 1, in which case we just get 1 or minus 1. And what if neither of them is equal to 0? Well, if neither is equal to 0, then they both have absolute value 1. Then a squared and b squared will both equal 1. And so a squared plus b squared would equal 2. So that's not possible either. All right, so this tells us that a plus bi has to be one of these four elements. And all four of these are units. Right? So all four are units. Okay, what are the inverses? 1 times 1 is 1. Negative 1 times negative 1 is 1. And then you have i times negative i is equal to 1. This tells you that they're all invertible. Okay, so there we go. If z is of the form a plus bi, then we know a squared plus b squared is 1. That allows us to very explicitly say what the uh, possibilities for z are, and all of them are units. Now, what if we don't write z as a plus bi. What if we use this alternate description of the norm map as just multiplying z by its conjugate? In this case, so this is proof one. Proof two, this is actually going to be quite short because we know that n of z, which is equal to one, is equal to z times z bar. And this shows that z can be multiplied by something to get one. This implies z bar is equal to the inverse of z. And so z is a unit. Oh, yeah. 
That was way faster, wasn't it? All right, everybody. We will see you next time.